The Story of Brandner Kasper by Franz von Kobel Chapter 1 Brandner Kasper was a locksmith by trade and had a small house near Tegernsee, quite high above the Alpbach, near the crossing to Schliersee. There he lived with his wife, Traudl, and his two boys, Toni and Girgel. They became soldiers early on and served in an artillery regiment out in the country. Kasper was a hard-working, good man who was also funny and smart. He was afraid of nothing at all. Once he grabbed a big wild dog that had run over a maid and would have torn her apart with his hands by his neck and threw him against the wall so hard that he never got up. And he set an end to the brawling and merrymaking of Hagmoor from Scharling at the mess on the Kaiserklausen. In addition to his locksmith work, he also made guns. And for the hunters, he repaired and mended short rifles better than a gunsmith in the city. Hunting and target shooting were his greatest pleasures. And in the end, he was allowed to hunt everywhere because the forester knew him to be a reliable assistant who didn't cost anything. As he got old, his Traudl died. That hurt him quite a bit, because she was a good and practical wife. But now he just lived on alone in his 75th year. He was still healthy and he hunted and shot well. Once he sits at home and makes and tests a row call. During this, there is a knock at the door. He thinks, who's out there? Because his acquaintances usually didn't bother knocking. And he says, come in. Now a wretched guy comes in, so thin that his bones were rattling and pale and hollow eyed. An abominable fellow. Kasper says, what's up? What do you want? The other one replies, Kasper, I'm the bone huckster, and I wanted to ask you if you want to go with me. So you're the bone huckster? My dear fellow, I don't want to go with you. I still like the world pretty well. I thought so, says the bone huckster. But I have to get you one day. What about spring? I can't do spring. It's the mating season of the wood grouse and the woodcock and the time when little birds sing most beautifully. I would loathe that. Or in summer? In summer I'm busy deer stalking and it's too hot. Or in autumn? What an idea, you fool. Should I miss the deer rut and the October shooting? That will not do. Well, what about winter? I don't like it then. Fox stalking and marten hunting is my special pleasure. And it's also too cold in winter. Do you want to live forever? It won't happen, Kasper. Bonehuckster, I'm going to tell you something. My father was 90 years old and that's how old I want to be. Then you can come and get me. But I think it's better than all the talk if you drink a glass of cherry brandy with me. I've got a really good one. And you look so miserable and thin that a glass surely will do you good. And I've got a couple of kirtanudeln to go with it. And so he goes to a wall box and takes out a bottle and a few glasses and the kirtanudeln. That has never happened to the bone huckster before. And he sits down at the table and tries the cherry brandy. It tastes quite good to him, and the kirta noodle too. And so the two drank, Kasper busily poured more, and the bone hugster got rather merry. But he still wanted to beat Kasper down on the 90 years. Then Kasper says, well, let's gamble for it. And he goes back to the wall box. A pack of playing cards lay on it, with the grass overcard on top. Kasper shoves it into his shirt sleeve and lays the cards on the table. Now take a stack, bone huckster, he says. This one is yours and the other one is mine. If you have the grass over in your stack, I'll go with you whenever you like. 
But if I have the glass over in my stack, you may not come back until I'm 90 years old. The bone huckster, who's already a bit tipsy, laughs and withdraws most of the cards and says, <laughs> Fine by me, get on with it. He thinks to himself that because he has more cards, the glass over might likely be his. While he looks at his cards one after the other, Kaspar secretly slips the glass over into his stack and after the bone huckster has finished going through his stack, he spreads his cards in front of him and consequently produces the glass over. Damn this bet! says the bone huckster, but Kaspar laughs and says, Let's drink to my 90th birthday! I can't do anything about it, says the bone huckster, but someday you will regret your luck. And when it comes to that, just call me and I'll come immediately. That won't happen, says Kaspar. And as the other is leaving, Kaspar tells him to take care that he doesn't fall into the brook and is quite happy with the visit. Chapter 2 Dark times came. The Tyrolean war broke out and frightened all the people. It was an evil war and cruel deeds were committed at Schwarz and on the Berg Isle. Many Bavarian soldiers died there and Kaspar's sons, which he liked so much, were among them. It was no use that they were praised during the report for their valiant deeds. Kaspar didn't see them anymore and that haunted him. Other sad and disappointing things happened. Foreign people came who bought and chopped the wood everywhere. Of course the old game trails, which he knew so well, changed and the game became less and the poachers became more, as is always the case when there is a war. Of course, Kaspar did not easily despair, but as time passed, he didn't like the world quite as much and he thought of the bone huckster and what he said about calling, but he still didn't call him. Now, something special happened. A dairy maid of the Gindlal mountain pasture was stabbed by a wild bull and immediately died. But while her people were wailing and complaining, the girl was standing happily and in good health at the heaven's gate and didn't even know how she got there. The porter, St. Peter, immediately saw her and opened the door that was next to the large gate. He wore a long, grey gown and a blue sash over his shoulder. And the girl looked at him in amazement. Greetings, girl, he says. And because she's a looker, he thinks to himself that she's proper material for a beautiful angel. Where am I? She says quite frightenedly. You're in heaven, says St. Peter. And I'll soon admit you to paradise. But first tell me, where are you from? I'm from Tegernsee and was a dairy maid at the Kindlalm. Interesting. Do you happen to know Brandner Kaspar? Who wouldn't know old Kaspar? He often comes to my cottage when he goes hunting. He still goes hunting? He must be 80 years old. He's mostly using the raised stand by now because he isn't good at stalking anymore. But apart from that, he's still in good health. Well, well, he should already be up here. I'm waiting for him every day. You might have to wait a while, says the dairymaid, if it's true what I was told. Is that so? What was it? They say, but I don't believe it, that Kaspar played cards with the bone huckster who lost and isn't allowed to remove him from the world before his 90th birthday. Kaspar is a jester and he might once have tricked someone into believing this story. Who knows, says St. Peter, there could be something in it. I must pay attention. But now girl, go in there, I'll send an angel after you to lead you on. You've lived a good and pious life in the world, that's why you're on your way to heaven now. And the dairy maid bids him farewell and kisses his hand and goes where he has told her. But St. Peter immediately writes a summons to the bone huckster and sends it to him. Chapter 3 The next day, early in the morning, the bone huckster comes quite subdued and humble which wasn't always his way. You summoned me, Mr. Porter, he says. Can I get you something? St. Peter looks at him seriously for a while, then he says, 
Bone Huckster. What do I have to hear about you? You're putting on a nice act, playing with Brand Nakash before his life, and losing the game on top of that. How dare you do such a thing? Well, uh, look, says the other. I know that Kashba is supposed to come up here, but uh, because there are enough people here anyway, I thought it wouldn't matter if we came uh, a little later. But it didn't occur to you that my bookkeeping is going to be a mess if everybody comes up here when he likes. Kashba is registered to come at 80, fair enough, but now he's already older than that, and you're even giving him 90. The bone huckster wanted to say something, but St. Peter angrily flew into his face. Be quiet! Go down at once and bring up Kaspar, or I'll throw you out of service! Then the bone huckster didn't dare say anything to him anymore, and shoved off dazedly. The story annoyed him greatly. I gave Kaspar my word on the 90 years, he thought, and now I'm supposed to break it. Already. No one in the world likes me. And when it comes to light that I've been up to no good, I cannot walk among people anymore. He thought and thought how to undo the deal. Since he was a shrewd imp, quite a few things occurred to him. It's worth trying, he thought to himself, hitched up his wagon and drove to Kashba, who smoked his pipe and read the newspaper. As the bone huckster came in, Kaspar slid his glasses down his nose and looked to see who it was. He quickly recognized the bone huckster because he was just as skinny as he had been the first time Kaspar saw him. What do you want? he said. I didn't call you and you ought to know what we agreed on. Or are you up to no good? No, no, nothing of the kind. And I know that you've got nine years left. There's nothing wrong with that. I just had a small business in the neighborhood and I wanted to visit you and see how you are doing. And uh, because I must drive my wagon to a place where you can see into paradise, I decided to tell you just in case you wanted to go with me. No, thank you, said Kaspar. I'm not as curious as you think and I'd rather be here where I know my way around, than in a foreign place where I don't know what things are like. Well, says the other, do you think that you'll have to stay where I'm taking you? There's no talking of this. It's a short ride, and we'll be back in an hour, because it's easy with my horses. And we can really see into paradise? Yes, of course, if I say so. And in an hour we'll be back? If you don't want to stay there long, it's up to you. We'll be back in an hour, as sure as I'm the bone huckster. Now Kasper was eager for the journey. There's no trouble in riding along for an hour and taking a peek into paradise, which he has heard so much about. And he fetches his good friend, the cherry brandy, and pours a few glasses. All right, he says. Bone Huckster, I'll go with you, and you'll bring me back here. Drink, it's cold outside. And they drank and drank and then went outside. There was a black wagon, shaped like a coffin, with a black horse in front of it. They got in, the Bone Huckster cracked his whip, and now they were rushing away so fast that Kasper could barely hold on to his hat and he was dumbstruck. As if the storm had carried them away, they sped on and suddenly everything went dark and lightning struck below them and above them and it thundered and cracked. Kasper screamed, What is it? What is it? Turn back! Then the bone huckster shouted in his ear, This place is called the Black Clouds. This is where thunderstorms come from, but we'll be through in no time. You needn't be afraid. And indeed, it quickly brightened up and they stopped in front of a big, big castle in the most beautiful sunshine. The castle had a golden gate and at the side door the bone huckster rang a bell 
and St. Peter came out at once. Well, Kospa, he says, you're here. Now go in. I'll show you paradise and you'll be glad about it. And he takes Kaspa by the hand and leads him in. But the Bonehuckster had to stay outside. And the two of them stand in a wide hall with a transparent wall like ground mirror glass. There they looked far into a garden with the most beautiful flowers in all colors and with large trees full of apples and pears and peaches and oranges. A great splendor. And Kasper couldn't talk for sheer amazement. And in the garden, the most beautiful angels were walking around with silver wings and shiny wreaths in their hair. And next to them, many, many people. And suddenly, two boys jumped along and joked and said, Hello, Father. Hello. And he recognized his Gilgal and his Tony. He cries, My goodness, my lads. And he flings his arms around their necks. And look, his Traudel comes along. And his father and mother and the whole pack of his friends. And all greeted him. And all were so happy that St. Peter, who was watching, wiped his eyes. And in the turmoil, a small angel flies along and says to Kaspa, Kaspa, the Bonehuckster bids me tell you that he's going down again. Will you go with him? No, my lad, says Kaspa. Tell him to go alone. I'll stay here and I don't want to know anything more about the world down there. And thank God a thousand times that he offered me the grace to come here. This is the story of Brandner Kaspar. <laughs>